How do you choose and analyze the content in your course? Is all the content equally important? The topic of this video is core content analysis. How well do you know the concept? Take a short quiz before we start. Core content analysis or core curriculum analysis aims to answer the question what? It is a tool for planning and developing teaching, especially in higher education. Core content analysis enables a teacher to explore the internal structure of the course content, for example, the hierarchy and connection between knowledge and skills. The tool can be used also in major or degree program level analysis. So, why make a core content analysis? The 21st century is characterized by abundance of information and knowledge. If the course contents are not regularly analyzed and prioritized, there is a risk of accumulation of knowledge and information overload in the course. Not all the core co course contents can be equally important. A teacher needs to analyze and prioritize the course contents in order to point out the core content of the course. This is necessary so that the students are able to achieve the intended learning outcomes of the course. There are different categorizations and classifications to be used in core content analysis. Perhaps the most used one is a categorization that divides the content into three categories. Course content should fall into these categories so that approximately 80% of the course content is the core content of the course. The must-know content means the content that is necessary to manage in order to be successful in future studies and understanding this, this content allows deep and broad knowledge acquisition. This is the main focus of the course, and intended learning outcomes should be drawn for this content. Approximately 15% of the course content is complementary knowledge. The should-know content adds theor theor theoretical details and clarifies the more unusual applications. Approximately 5% of the course content is special knowledge. Nice to know content deepens the management of the content. Here you can see core content divider, in which the content is divided to must know, should know, and nice to know contents. Sometimes the content is further divided into academic discipline and professional skills to make more detailed analysis between knowledge and skills, as, is, as it has been done with this core content divider. There are also other categorizations that can be used to make core content analysis. Here you can see themes for this module. Take a few moments to browse them through. How can a core content analysis be made of these contents? Well, let's find out. With our example course, approximately 80% of the content, such as learning outcomes, teaching and assessment methods, will fall into the must-know category, that is, knowledge about these contents. Corresponding skills, that is, what is the student able to do, would be the student is able to formulate learning outcomes, choose suitable teaching and assessment methods, and justify the decisions made. Approximately 15% of the content will fall into the should-know category. Knowledge about these contents is important, but not the core contents of this module. There are material modules available about these themes in UNIPS platform. Corresponding skills could look like this. Approximately 5% of the content will fall into the nice-to-know category. This special knowledge might be learned when learning the must-know and should-know contents as kind of a side product, and it can vary among the people according to their own interests and motivation. Corresponding skills could look like this. Now, consider your own course. Make a core content analysis utilizing the core content divider. You can use a categorization that suits the best for your own purposes. 
When you have identif identified the core contents of your course, remember to check the connection and alignment with the learning outcomes of the course. A template for core content analysis can be found from this module's web pages.